guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I have a special, somebody referred me to this tool and for a workbench, I think that this might actually be perfect. But I've never seen one person. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see exactly what is in this case. And is it really gonna be worth it? There's a lot of tools out there that might be worth it to have on your workbench. And this one here, I don't know. Because, you know, my tools have to have multiple purposes. And, you know, I don't know. Taking somebody's word for it isn't necessarily a good practice. What? Guys, I know this looks a little odd, but this is a precision screwdriver that's motorized. It's motorized. Woo! So let's see what comes in the box. All right, so I have an interesting looking base. Look at this. Okay. It's got a, a pad on one side, so I, I, I assume it goes like that on your desk. And here is the Aeromax USB-C charging. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Um, from build quality, just from build quality, it's got an aluminum shell. It's got two definite buttons, left and right. And take a look at the LEDs. How cool is that? <laughs> and it's got the Precision X for your bits. And the bits are what is in the bottom. Oh my God, yes. This is gonna be such a cool kit. All right, whoever referred this to me, uh, I thank you so much because this kit comes in a metal case. Look at that. So that's pretty much what's in the box. It has a metal sleeve. And look, it's got a click latch. Whoop. This would even be good in a toolkit. Look how good that is. Now, um, I'm just curious if this handles number two Phillips. Because if it doesn't, well, meh. we'll see. It might be a number one Phillips. Hmm. Yeah, I've got a number one. It's kind of stubby, but it's got some real tiny bits in there, which is what you want if you're working on a lot of electronics. But guess what? Oh, there's two sides. There's two sides. And that does look like a number two Phillips because it's more broad. Um... Holy cow, let's, let's just go into it from one side. And I know I'm jumping all around on this, but I am so excited. You know, there's a lot of products out there you're like, man, I, I think maybe it's gonna be cheap or cheesy, not really worth it. And this guy, so far I would say that this one here is quite the deal. Um, I will leave a link in the video description down below where you can get this. Oh my gosh, it's got a little extension, very cool. And this little extension has a small diameter so you can get inside some of those uh, holes in the plastic of medical devices. That's the biggest conflict with a lot of screwdrivers, especially these bit kits, is that the bit and the extender, they're a wide diameter where you can't fit it in the hole. This one you can. Look at this. How cool is that? And let's, let's test out the torque. Okay, you can hear it bogging down, but I'm actually squeezing quite hard. Now, this device right here is used for seating screws, either in a PCB or especially in an electronic device, a smaller device. You don't use this to torque them down, although, I, look at I'm pushing it with all my force on my own hand, and it's barely slowing down. So there is a gear reduction in there. I can hear it. Um, it does have a battery status indicator. I can see a series of lights right here. Very cool. Uh, so that amazing click release sleeve. And I'm assuming, okay, yep. So the base is what it plugs into the stand. So this can sit around your bench, just like that. Very cool. Very cool indeed. So in the bit kit, I have a manual precision screwdriver and it's got a nice bearing in the end. So it's very easy to use. Very nice. In fact, 
that's nicer than most of my uh, precision screwdrivers because it's it's all metal and it's got a nice smooth roll to it um, is it magnetic let's try it I bet you it is yes it is the magnet is not the strongest magnet in the world but it's definitely gonna hold the bits in there so let's try the extender oh yeah yeah those bits are going nowhere so very cool yep there's a magnet in there as well all right so the precision manual screwdriver and it snaps in now these bits are all magnetically held into the carrier they're all magnetically held in so that's why I can flip this guy around and not have to worry about it and it's kind of cool they show you photos of some of the stuff that you would use this on and you've got uh, microelectronics like phones and tablets watches cameras definitely cameras eyeglasses drones this would be such a cool kit for drones uh, video games uh, more telephones yeah I agree with all those um, this would be an ultimate bit kit for drones because with drones you're, you're using small fasteners and you're doing uh, a lot of stuff out in the field to which this packs up into what a slightly over half an inch by what two and a half inches very cool uh, so let's go through some of the bits I have we got Torx and hold on guys I, I'll get you the sizes so I've got a T4, is that? And smaller, holy cow, those are tiny. I don't even know how to relate how small those are. That's super small. And uh, so one side is like a T.5 and the other side is a, a T1, I think. T5 and T1, that's so it's tiny. But I have actually had electronics where I've had to do that. It's crazy. And if you don't have the right torques, the next best thing you can do is find a precision flat blade and use the precision flat blade very carefully in replacement of the torques. And let's see, it goes up to size T20. All right, so T10, T15, T20. Those are all gonna be some of the larger sizes anyway. Uh, those are gonna be the most common. I've got uh, Allen's, I've got H, 0.7 that's really small for an allen is it even an allen it's so small i don't even know if it's an allen <laughs> uh and it goes all the way up to uh 4.0 that's quite the spread i love it um i got t20h oh security bit okay so i got security bit torques um i have phillips and wow these are so small and these are double-ended bits so one side is tiny phillips the other side is tiny flat blade. So I've got a 1.5 Phillips or cross point and I've got a 1.0 flat blade, one millimeter. And it goes all the way up to, this is a uh, three, 3.0 Phillips and a 3.0 flat blade. Now mind you, that is not a uh, P1, P2. Okay, so here's what the one that I'm really interested in. So that's a 4.0 cross point. And that is really close to like a number two Phillips. Pretty close. Maybe a little, little more blunt than I'd prefer. It does have some star points. Um, it's got some triangle, triangle bits. Oh, those ones I see on like video games and stuff. That's a super hard, I, I had one of those just the other day. I had to uh, open up a toy to get inside it and they, they really didn't want me inside that toy. So yeah, it's got a series of the the triangle bits. Um, let's see, some more of the, are those read and prints? Oh, cross point, I got, I got more cross points. They go up to a pretty large size. Yep, again, uh, up to probably the equivalent of a number two Phillips. Um, I have some pentalobe, pentalobe which Apple infamously uh, put out there and made everybody's life miserable. Pentalobe, you actually will see pentalobes on some um, hand controls and stuff like that too. Like, believe it or not, it's when you find them, they're such a pain. I hate it. Um, and let's see, what are these ones? 
Again, um, some more triangle bits that go to the other side is a cross point. Okay, that's interesting. And let's see, oh, nice, 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 nice. So I've got some square drive to security screws. Now these security screws like this, I've seen them on like Steris hand controls uh, for surgical tables. They are such a burden if you don't have the right tool. Such a burden. I have a 0.8, I don't, I can't even see. I'll, I'll have to put that under the, micro, under the microscope. It looks almost like a point, but it says that it is point, 0 0.8. I have no clue what that is. No clue. It's If anything, I might use that as like a pin punch. That would be probably a good use for it. More security bits. Yep. And let's see. Oh, that's a security bit. The three point, three point uh, security screws. Here. We'll let you guys see them up close. You can see the three point. It's really cool. They have a picture of the fasteners next to each and every one. And I'm pretty particular about my tools. I don't like. Um, mixing up the bits or anything. If I pull one from one point, it's going to definitely go back in that point. And that really helps further on down the road when you're trying to find a uh, bit or something when you're in the field. Um, I really wish there was a spot for this guy. And right now I'm not really seeing it. Like, I really wish that I could like store it inside this guy. I don't really have a spot for it. Oh, okay. And I'm pretty sure that's going to yeah, that's going to conflict. Aye. Okay, so it's going to live in my screwdriver. That's basically what's going to happen. Okay. So the other concern is that this uh, this insert, it is a single direction. So just like now, I just put it in backwards and it didn't go in. But once it's in, it's, it's holding it. Holding it really well. So I guess... Um, I guess this guy is just going to live like that, which means it can't charge. If I put it like this, now you can charge it with the USB-C, but now where's this bit going to go? Ah, oh, the frustration. Oh my gosh. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's test this guy out on some fasteners. Let's see how it does. Let's try a Bluetooth speaker. This is uh, going to be pretty close to a real world application anyway. So I've got a, a series of hexagon hexagonal <laughs> screws around the perimeter. Uh, let's go ahead. I could uh, use Allen's or I could use Torx. Let's try and do the right thing this time, huh? Oh, never mind. There it is. So uh, because of the grind, it made it kind of difficult for me to see exactly what size it was. You know, I can normally look at Allen's and I know right away, but notice how the grind, it's at a taper. And I don't know if they do that so that if it has the potential to fit more than one size, uh, size screw. But uh, because of the taper, I thought it was smaller than it is. So anyway, there we go. It's this one. And to give this guy the biggest fighting chance I can, I'm going to put the bit right here in the end. So normally for a precision screwdriver, what you're going to do is you're going to break it loose. And then you're going to use the screwdriver. Okay, so unlike some screwdrivers that will uh, start the electric motor, as soon as it goes into an over torque condition, um, it stops what it's doing. See, now I loosened it up enough and it takes it out. So some screwdrivers, you could break it loose and just keep the hold the button down like that, but look how it stops. I really wish it could take over. Now mind you, these are fasteners that are into molded plastic. so. They are a pain. They're kind of rough. Come on. Yeah, these ones, they're in pretty tight. Unrealistic scenario. Because they're just going into molded plastic and there's a lot of friction on those screws. Not something you would ever see on an electronic device, really. Okay. So pull all those out. No problem. And that pulls off my speaker grid. Which, can I get it? Nope. 
it's not coming off. I don't want to destroy my speaker. Let's see how good it is at putting the fasteners back in exactly the way that they were. Okay. So with screws that go into molded plastic, you go in the reverse direction till you feel it kind of pop. And that's when the threads match up with the threads that are already cut into the plastic right there. Then you can proceed forward. I guess that's one way of doing it, popping the screw. Um, nonetheless, just tighten it down. Oh, let's see, what other electronic devices do I have? Oh yes. My poor reliable keyboard. Guys, if you don't have a smaller size keyboard with a built-in uh, trackball, shame on you. <laughs> These guys make life so much easier when it comes to uh, servicing medical equipment, especially if there's only like one USB port. And that's the other cool thing about this. Look at this. There's USB ports in the keyboard. So it's, it's also a USB expansion. A lot of medical devices only have one USB port this guy here, you plug it in. Look at that. Boop, boop. There's two extra USB ports on the keyboard. So let's go ahead and let's pull this guy. Let's see how well the screwdriver does with a proper uh, threaded fastener. And there we go. That's the right size. Okay. And I'm not going to break them loose. Oh, okay. I just had to touch it once. Yep, it's backing them right out, no problem. I, this would definitely make life a wee bit faster. Okay, let's go ahead and put them in. Oh. All right, and it gives it just the right amount of torque because the last thing you want, especially with uh, fasteners that are in electronics, you never want it to just over torque, which is what a lot of people do. And hell, even I'm sometimes guilty of it. I used to be way worse. When we went to brushless tools, they're just so aggressive that it's much better to use a precision driver like this. But anyway, guys, that is the Aeromax micro driver, precision driver. It's electronic, it's USB-C chargeable, comes in a neat little kit and a desktop stand. Look at that, how cool is that? I'm going to have the link and you can pick one up for yourself. They're really inexpensive. And I think that this is kind of a win, especially if you have a precision bench top where you're going to be doing a lot of smaller electronics. Thanks for watching guys.